Hey folks, just wanted to take an opportunity to go over any long-term plans I have for the playthroughs for the Galactic Empire as well as the Rebel Alliance. Um, a number of builds that I've featured or teased over the past couple of years, they all do play in a long-term format, and I just wanted to go over that real quick with some of y'all. So let's have a look. So the first one we're going to have a look at is the Galactic Empire. Um, so the idea here being that the uh, tie enforcer would be the starter SV. Um, after that, the player's uh, starter CV would be a Gozanti format for variants. I'm still working out the shaping on it, but it should be a starter price. Uh, all of these thrusters and stuff, this would be something that you'd upgrade into long term. So it'll be a vehicle that could stay with you throughout the course of the game. Um, now, it, you know, it's not going to be uh, an in-game brawl or anything of that nature, but maybe it could convert into a minor or just perhaps a, a general purpose ship. Um, so we're looking at, uh, got 18 rope plots to start off with, uh, or these could be converted to additional shields. So all your stand uh, standard start equipment necessary, so shield and uh, warp, and I'll probably have to go with uh, three, maybe even two, 320 cargo containers. So, not that prolific, it, you know, again, it could be something like a, a late game miner, perhaps high G miner, so that, that could be a thing. Yeah, just a, a general purpose workhorse. Uh, it does have a decent uh, turret allotment, so I think it was like uh, 15 or 16, something of that nature, so not too bad. Uh, working out a couple positions for weapon mounts and stuff like that, so. You know, again, there's going to be some, some pretty good variety of utility with that. Uh, and this build is going to it's going to play a role with uh, this particular ship as well, late game. Um, yeah, so that could potentially be the, uh, the progress from going from the time force to your starter cv now i do want to do like a uh an attack craft or something that would be an upgrade over the tie enforcer so uh this is the first idea i'm, I'm floating it's uh somewhat inspired by dark Maul's scimitar so perhaps double the performance of the tie enforcer uh and try and get space for all of the shield capacity that's Optional with Reforge Eden, so that would be a thing. Um, and of course, all the power to, to pay for all of that, and PPQ placement, all that. So, probably going to be a uh, pilot and two passenger seats. So, a small crew could fit in here. And not too bad. I'm not sure on the name, perhaps Ty Reaver. I think that's what I'm going to start off with. Uh, maybe if y'all have some suggestions for it. Feel free to flip that in the comments. Um, right, so now this would be some sort of uh, Corvette. I uh, want to, to be this an, an efficient fighter. So you're not going to see anything like uh, grow plots or anything of that nature. So going to be pretty tight. I think I had it set up with, uh, I'm going to go with the six shield format for the shield capacitors and the uh, the the recharge uh charger couplings so and that would give it something along the lines was it the 40 yeah forty three thousand. and i think i had uh six for the the larges so not the most substantial recharge but it would give you the shame the same shield value as you would have with a, a full eight loadout so that's what i was looking at uh except just to get that cheaper for cpu so right now it's sitting at 1.8, which is not too bad. Um, I'd like to get that perhaps at 1.4. And it does have a respectable loadout as far as turrets. Uh, there's going to be some mounted of weapons. There will be some additional ones as well. Probably not going to have this gap here. I think I'm going to fill this in because I'd, I'd want to utilize that space. But, you know, again, with these builds here, still kind of going through the shaping to get a format. Um, Gozanti is starting to look a little bit more like a Gozanti, <laughs> so that's a good thing. Uh, just 
lot of work to be done with the nose there to get that to be a convincing argument. Uh, but yeah, so these two um, these two builds here had to uh, be built to exact specifications for a reason, uh, especially with the acclimator here. Uh, we'll come back to that, but you know, of course, the uh, the ship here, which of Originally had it as a Star Destroyer, but I guess I'm going to downgrade it to like a, a cruiser scale because it wouldn't really be convincing to try to sell the point that this is a Star Destroyer and then I have a Acclimator, which is bigger than that. So probably would call the Acclimator a Star Destroyer in some capacity. Uh, Acclimator 4. Now I know in Extended Lore there were some conversions to transition these from being a uh, assault ship uh, to something more akin to a Star Destroyer. So I guess that's kind of the feeling I'm trying to convey here. But so uh, with this ship here, the cruiser, I'm um, probably going to go through a name change as well. And there will be two variants, one for Reforging and one for Vanilla. Uh, so the Vanilla one would be uh, more of a carrier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the uh, the the device placement for like the shields and the uh, fusion cores and stuff like that, take that out and convert that space into a hangar. So it would be a bottom flying hangar option for the vanilla, which also could be used as a Reforged Eden build as well. So the Reforged Eden players would have a uh, option of two builds to choose from more that's uh, more of a combat oriented mission ship and perhaps another one that could be uh, focusing more on like a, a carrier type build. Now as to this ship here, this I think I'm intending to be the flagship of the fleet. Uh, top build. Uh, so, I you know, I wanted to have a proper Star Destroyer, but the one that I have, it's just, it's too much. And it's, um, there, there's too many boxes to try to check on that and they're just not happening. Like as far as like the cost, um, the size, class, and then with the ramps, limiting the build option to just reforge Eden. Uh, that, you know, it's just, there's not enough boxes being checked with that build. So kind of had to hard pass on that thing. I'd like to build it at some point to, to finish it off. But um, right now it's just kind of low on the priority list. It, you know, again, it's not, there's just not there's not enough return value for justifying sinking so much time into it. But you know, it it would be great to have it in game. <laughs> I'd love to have a Star Destroyer, so maybe I'll be compelled to finish it off. But in the meantime, this is kind of the uh the token gesture uh should provide all the functions that I would have wanted out of a Star Destroyer. Uh, in the acclimator. So kind of working through this process here, getting the size right, and then of course the shaping and all that, that's gonna be a, a big project in itself. You know, look at this, right? You know, just the price, I'm completely, well, not completely, mostly plastic, and that's 100,000 carbon substrate. Uh, it wouldn't be realistic. I originally wanted to try to get this thing at one point, well, 2.1 million build, <laughs> and that's just not going to be possible at 474 length. This thing is two blocks off of max length, so, yeah. A lot of hard restrictions on that to generate that, unfortunately. So, unfortunately, you know, again, it's something I have to leave on the back burner. Now, this in its own right is, is a lot of ship as it is. And so what I wanted to do is have something with a, a bottom flying hanger to give that, uh, that Star Destroyer effect going on, that feel, you know, something convincing. And I didn't want to leave it just as a, uh, a carrier for SVs. I wanted to be able to fit some CVs in there. So that's where these ships come in and perhaps even there'd be some more builds generated around uh qualifying for that metric of being able to fit in there that could they could be their own mission ships 
So the thought here was being that this would be the the starter, and then you know it could upgrade to like perhaps a, a combat ship, an early game combat ship for you know some like uh, cutters and cruisers and uh, some of the lighter Xerax ships or other opponents that you'd run into. You know, as far as like a Camrit, probably not. Uh, of course, not like a a Tavera, stuff like that. But you know, just to get you going. And, you know, a little bit of POI assault, and then later on you could uh, convert it into a miner or some other utility ship. And, uh, and of course, this thing would be able to park inside of the acclimator. So the idea with the acclimator being something like a, uh, like a Helios sort of thing. And then you could think of these ships as the the modules to some effect something like that <laughs> a little wonky right now working out the facing and sizing and all that that could be finessed a little better but and the general idea is there that you'd have so like a you know maybe a pair of Gazantis here if you want to do that or you know two of the corvettes um or some other uh carousel of cvs that you like to park up here maybe some of the module systems or something but then of course uh you know some some parking for hvs and you know a number of svs that you want to put in there um you know, I'd like to do like some some roof mounts for some of the tie enforcers and other tie craft that I'd like to build. So that's an idea too. So uh, here I, I'm gonna shoot for a 2.1 million build. It's a lot of ship though, so I don't know if that's gonna be carried out. Of course, it's gonna have to be plastic, and and then I would just um, reinforce some of the sectors or leave some of the uh, the sectors that would work as decoys leave that open for the player to place additional armor if they want to do that so yeah i guess the idea was you know i always wanted to do like a um a nomad playthrough and if i was to do that what sort of ship would i have so thinking in terms of like imperial and, and rebel playthrough this is kind of the the answer that i came with for uh, the imperial side and you know, this would be something that you can land planet side as well, if you wanted to disembark some some HVs. Uh, so, also another idea here is that this area is left open to where, like, if you have uh, some HVs that you want to park and get it ready for a mission, then the Gozanti would work to where you could uh, back up to the lip of this thing and uh, drive your HVs up into it. So. You know, something like that. You know, back up a little bit more, but yeah. So, you know, you look, do a little bit of uh, mission prep in this area. So, pretty cool idea. And of course, with the Corvette, this would be more of a a combat-oriented build. So this would come later than the Gozanti, but. You know, super lean, super efficient as far as the combat. Um, I wanted to stay away from drive thrusters and just trying to get that all out with uh, some advance to keep the CPU cost down. So that way that could be spent on shields or uh, weapons and stuff like that. Uh, it's a pretty good build so far as far as the efficiency. So I think that's going to execute well, that idea. So, yeah... Like a whole system here, uh, this mothership flies to a system, and then you just deploy your mission ships if you'd want to play it like that. Um, yeah, so this is a short-term uh, rollout for Imperials. You know, I'd, I'd like to grow this roster with some additional builds. Uh, of course, I think there's going to be a tank. So definitely got to generate an Imperial tank. That's got to be an option. Uh, maybe something inspired from Rogue One or you know, something to that effect, that, that sort of tank.
Okay, now, so moving on to the Rebel Alliance, this is what we have right now. Uh, these are some older builds, so a lot of it's got to be gone over as far as, like, uh, re-upping the value of uh, the aesthetics and performance and all that stuff. But, so, the idea here being that uh, the A-Wing is going to serve as the starter SV. Uh, then the progression there would be for transitioning to a starter CV. Uh, so probably the CR-70 or perhaps the CR-90. Now, I am kind of uh, have an ambition to generate my own Corvette theme. Uh, my, my own uh, take on what a Corvette would look like. But, you know, as it is, these are okay. So I'm kind of... Th now, th again, these are some older builds. So kind of work on gutting the interior, getting some of the efficiency right and making the most out of the space and so that's what uh these are going through right now um so with uh this one right here it's not there isn't really going to be space for farms so that's a thing and you know kind of an ask with starters is that you'd have some uh, you know at least a, a nine crow plot but unfortunately there's just not enough space for that here uh so that's probably why I'll opt to make this the general starter, but, you know, this is kind of a build as it is, and I could just do a, a remake and overhaul and, you know, make it more of a, a leaner budget starter build if the player wants to opt for that. You know, maybe they don't care for farming. I mean, I certainly don't. I, I seem to get by just fine without having to have grow plots, but I know that's not for everybody, so... So yeah, I think that we're going to have two options here. So CR-70 and CR-90. Um, decent upgrade as far as weaponry. Um, working through some of the turret placements. Uh, so looking at, I think I had like 24 something just right out of the gate. <laughs> so this actually is a pretty good turret placement gun platform. And I think that's only going to get better. I just got to work out the CPU and all that stuff. So th what the player could transition to from there, they've got two choices. Uh, so they could go to the uh, Nebulon B frigate, or they could go to the, the Mon Cal. Um, now, the, the issue here with this is that uh, being a vertical builders, well... There's a lot of hurdles to jump through with this. It's uh, it's really annoying to get in and out of, and it doesn't really uh, facilitate uh, planetary missions. So, um, now if I can, you know, find a decent way to get a uh, an entrance in here, and find something to do with this drive thruster, put that somewhere else, and if I can generate an entrance in here that would lead up to this elevator system I have going on, then I think that would uh, work out well. It would work out well to uh, mitigate some of the issues with the vertical builds. Um, yeah, so and there's not there's not a whole lot of base for hangar capacity here as well, so it, you know, it'll fit like A-wing, a um, couple of the Y-wings, and uh, you know, X wings and stuff like that. But if you've got anything bigger than that, that's not gonna, it's not gonna cut it. So, I'll take a look at that here in a second. But doubling back, so, so this would be the starter SV, and then these would be more of the advanced attack craft. Um, maybe the X wing would be more of a mid range. Um, so, with this build, I'm not certain if this is something that I'd want to roll out. So. I might end up just making something that's inspired by the X-Wing, uh, my own take on it, because uh, there's <laughs> there's a lot of aesthetic issues, like, you know, this going on here with this this janky system I have, like this little interior tub or whatever. Uh, looks okay from the side, but from overhead profile, I'm not sure I'm digging it. There's some issues to be resolved in those, so that's a thing. Um, and then also, what I've done is I've put the, the gun lines close to the interior, uh, the, to the center line, the fuselage, because once you put, put the uh, the guns to the outside there, then it really hits the performance. So that's an issue that needs to be worked out. 
Now the Y wing, this was uh, built pre 1.7 Reforged Eden, so it doesn't have any of the the new shields or spacing for those in mind. So this will probably have to grow a little bit, but uh, when it is uh, fully upgraded uh, pre 1.7, it was pretty darn good for uh, breaking up some PVs and other small to mid range capital vessels. So. I'd like to see that role fulfilled again for the new Reforged Eden, or the current one we're at anyways. Uh, so after that, uh, some sort of YP transport. Um, obviously inspired by the Millennium Falcon, but not necessarily following in that suit. I wanted to have some sort of rear entry hangar for like a speeder bike or maybe some small harvester or something like that. Uh, of course, you know, a lot of upgrade options here. I'd, I'd think max potential for shields and uh, warp and all the energy necessary to pay for all that and a bunch of uh, turrets and, and such. So yeah, so nice, nice range of SVs there. Again, this is just starting out. So I think I'd like to grow this range as well eventually, but first priority is get this, uh, this playthrough rolled out first. Um, yeah, doubling back to the Nebula B frigate. So this is a, uh, it was a pretty good build, uh, pre 1.7 Reforged Eden before the new system was put in with the shields. So I'd have to go back over this build and, and correct this, uh, the CPU cost and, and making it relevant. You know, maybe I could do a little better with, uh, the thruster efficiency. So that's something I'd have to look at. Um, and then of course spacing for the new shields, but there's a lot going on here with the ceiling that I could probably utilize as far as spacing for the, the new shields. And then of course there is a bunch of area throughout the ship. Now, I originally did have this laid out as an expansion system. So that this would be up to, well, formally it would be up to the dictate of what the player wants to do with it. But I guess for Reforged Eden, we can probably just allocate this to some of the new shields. Uh, and then it's a matter of what can I do to get the CPU back? So I'll have to fine tune weight and thruster costs and stuff like that. But yeah, so this would be an option. Um, yeah, I guess you could think of it like the, uh, the Corvette, the, this would be, um, the Rebel Alliance version of this Corvette over here, you know, more oriented towards combat now so well i guess it, it'd be two options so you could roll out with this uh, if you want to transition from the corvette you could uh, transition transition to the frigate or you could go to the uh the light cruiser here which would serve more of a uh, carrier capacity uh so this mon cal inspired design it's an older build with a lot of, well, really all of these, uh, Rebel Alliance builds are older. So there's going to have to be some overhaul done to get the aesthetic value correct on these, but yeah, kind of the, the bottom flying hangar concept here going on, you know, rear exit for deployables, uh, tanks, HVs, all that sort of thing. Uh, Yeah, it still holds up pretty good as far as uh, what it looks like in comparison to, you know, what I could put out now. I don't think I have to overhaul too much. Uh, I'd want to do something with these sides, though. This is too much of a straight line. You know, maybe I'd want to do more of a, a wing profile, kind of like with the uh, the Liberty ships. The, the, what is it, the MC-80, I think it is, the Liberty style. Or, you know, I may just tuck this in as a home one style, kind of thin it out. And then for the next build, I'd want to do another Mon Cal design, a, a bigger ship. So thinking with this ship, whatever this is going to be here, uh, as the, the fleet carrier, um, that would be something that would work in the same capacity as what's going on with the acclimator over here. So thinking you know, these Corvettes could fit inside of that ship as well. So 
yeah, that's that's the general aim with that. So, you know, a nice run of uh, a full playthrough here. A uh, little bit of crossover with some of the builds. So, you know, you'll have some some options. Don't necessarily if you don't necessarily like one of them, you, know, you could have a little bit of uh, wiggle room as far as uh, choice here. So, you don't necessarily have to have this and then go to this that i think they maybe both say uh serve the same sort of function uh maybe well i guess maybe this would be more of an attack ship and just more of a carrier but uh again you'd have better options with between these two um yeah i guess that's kind of the short of it uh right so again this is just you know, just a preliminary playthrough. I want to get a line that would be able to facilitate a full playthrough for the player. And then once that's laid out, uh, I'll grow it from there. So, you know, whatever suggestions you have past that and whatever ideas I could concoct as far as uh, inspirations of particular ship designs from the these universes or you know, maybe my own interpretations of things that I throw in, but yeah, you know, I'd like to entertain a, a full range of builds to, I guess, kind of scratch the itch of everything. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I guess that's it. Uh, all right, I'll catch y'all later. Peace out.